what I've talked about, and this is why I'm flying a bit by the seat of my pants, because I thought it would be a good idea to do. Um, I came into a school, and this school had a very, very low IT computing reputation. They, the kids hate computing, or hated computing. They hated computing, and they hated ICT. What's the point in ICT? I hear that, I heard that. Ben, it, tell us what ICT is. Oh, sorry, ICT, yeah, sorry. ICT is Information Communication Technology. ICT world. is the subject, uh, ICT is the subject, IT is the, uh, IT is the discipline. There you go. Um, so there is two different things there. Um, but they all hated it. What's the point in ICT? Why should I bother? And this is what I get 20, 30 times a day. Or I did last year, they don't do it to me anymore, because I yell at them. Um, I don't yell at them, but I give them a whole list and I make them sit there and listen to it. Or I get them to write an essay of how they use ICT every day in their lives. So they don't do that for me anymore. Um, it's a pretty valid question. Who do you teach at? I teach in a school in Bolton. I teach at Canon Slade in Bolton. I, I teach at Canon Slade in Bolton. Oh, Canon Slade? Yeah. That's possible, isn't it? Well, it's a very good... It's now Ben's got there. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Uh, very, it's a very good school. The kids, have, the kids are very, very good. But they don't. The problem I always had was the fact that they didn't understand, and you had to explain to them why do we bother doing ICT. And it's something that a lot of people do. And I think this is something that I'm starting to work on. I start, start to push it. I pushed it last year, and I went completely crazy last year, and I nearly had, I was shattered by the end of the year. But by doing it. I've actually got them not questioning me so much anymore, which is good, because it starts to work that other way, where they never, they don't question it anymore, which is good because I've said, I've tried to explain, and the way I teach, I try to explain, okay, here's a spreadsheet, we hate spreadsheets, they all hate spreadsheets, and they all hate databases, but by showing them different aspects of spreadsheets and different aspects of databases, I'm starting to try and encourage them. So, last year with year eights, I'd, um, we did databases, we set them up with a basic bog standard boring access database. But the second I got past that point, everybody was bored with databases. They looked at it, ooh. So the first thing I did was, I write, right, we've got a basic access database, let's move to macros. And I showed them a couple of macros and then said, right, see what you can make and see what you can do with that macro. Now, macros are introduction to programming. And I think it is. It's a basic introduction to programming. We teach them scratch in year seven, and we don't touch anything else that's programming in this, in this particular school. We teach them scratch in year seven, we don't teach them anything else until year, now, uh, until year 10 where they've got to choose. And I thought that was wrong. So this year, what we're doing is we're trying, I, I tried to do it where year eight, I have to follow the scheme of work. I have to follow what all the teachers are teaching. I have to, that's, my, that's the rule. So, what I did was I tried to manipulate that and change that so that, okay, I'm still teaching databases. I've got to teach databases. It's, it's the law. It's what I've got to do. But what I'm doing now is obviously I'm trying to introdu introduce programming elements to it. And obviously then I can start to push that because GCSE computing is now coming. Um, I also do flash clubs um, and we do the Animation 11 competition, which is, um, um, I try to do it and I apply for tickets every year anyway, because I think it's brilliant. It, Animation 11 was run, set up by Manchester University, if you don't know, and it's a brilliant thing where um, they give you um, a day out, and it, basically you've got to make flash movies. You've got to make a one minute flash movie. You can make it in other things, but if you want to win, you've got to make it in flash. Okay? And you make a one minute flash movie, and they then have a day of celebration for the kids who've made good flash movies. And those flash movies, you go out, you go for them, you go to Manchester University today, and then in the morning they show you all these flash movies that these kids have made, and they are phenomenal. If you want to see anim animators, they are the best you will ever see. They are really good. The Year Ten kid who did it last year was is amazing, and so the stuff they do, and they give out prizes for that. They are also sponsored by Electronic Arts, Microsoft, Google, blah 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 blah. blah. Um, and it's brilliant. It's a brilliant day out for the kids because it enthuses them. And I had a year seven at the end of that day because they pitch it perfectly for Manchester University. They pitch it so that um, they can ex they explain it in such a way that kids understand it. So I had a year seven who doesn't know, know a thing about computers. He could explain the structure of 
um, memory by the end of the day. So you knew what the difference was a bit, byte, kilobyte, megabyte, you knew the whole lot, and you knew what was it all about and how much you could fit in each of the spaces and all the rest of it because of the way we pitched it towards them. So if you're a teacher and you haven't been to Manchester, uh, to the Animation 11 competition, well, the Animation 12 this year, um, get yourself signed up because it is the best day out. Even if you don't enter kids, you get the opportunity to buy, to get tickets. And you get 10 tickets allocated per school. Okay, so then you can pick 10 kids who you think are particularly gifted. That's why I do it with, with a flash book. I get kids to make animations, and if they do it, then um, if, they enter, if they come along to the club quite regularly, then they're part of my 10. They get, they get in. And if I show, see some particularly gifted kids in my classes, then I'll give them a ticket as well, and I'll ask them if I've got enough spare tickets. And it's going from strength to strength. Last year, I think I had six kids in my flashbook. This year, I've got about 15. So it is getting better. And it's showing them. Then again, it's logic. It's thinking about structure. Because flash is simple, and it, and it engages them as well, which I think is important. Because you've got to engage them. If you don't engage them, there's no point. Now, the other thing, I'm watching this time. The other thing that um, I've watched a lot of these um, presentations online and things like this. and. The constant push is this computing at school group that started, and it started a couple of years ago, and I'm not knowing a lot about it, but I know it started a couple of years ago. And the idea is, is to push computing in schools and trying to get kids engaged in computing and get them programming at a younger age, okay? Which is great, and I think that's fantastic. Um, some of it I agree with, a lot of it I agree with, where we should be pushing programming, we should start be pushing logic skills, which seems to have died out with all the, um, the kind of development of all these visual things that we can do. If I give, if, if I give, a, student, um, for, if I give a, a student a graphics package, they will spend four hours making graphics. If I give them Dreamweaver, they will not touch that code in one ounce. They will spend all day making it look pretty. And I, think that's, uh, and I do think that's wrong. Because when I want them to develop websites, I want them to actually, yes, I want them to make it look pretty. Yes, I want them to be engaged. But I also want to show them, actually, you know what, Dreamweaver, it's not about drawing the pretty picture behind it. it. It's not drawing a pretty picture. It's what happens when you draw the pretty picture behind it and make it look pretty. So then what we're doing is that's what the computing at school group is. The problem that I found, and that a lot of the things that I've, that I've found, and that when I'm watching things and online, Alan posts all of it, a lot of it online. When you, put it on, when you put it online, you see these discussions. The problem that I find is that a lot of kids don't understand. They don't understand what computing is. And they don't understand what computing you can do with computing. And we had, there was this one that was like three quarters of an hour of people. And this lad was stood up at the front and he was trying to explain what computing, he was saying, look, kids are not engaged in computing and these are the things that are going on with computing. And then you've got a guy, a guy at the back going, well, I'm a software developer, and I think it's really important that I do. Yes, but I'm a consultant, and I'm, a, and I'm really interested in computing. Yes, but I'm doing this, and I'm really interested in computing in school as well. But nobody, the kids don't understand what computing is, and what a computer science degree, or where computing can take you. And it's a massive, massive problem. The problem is not kids not engaged with ICT and not engaged with computing. Because at, at year seven and year eight and year nine, they will engage with you if you make it interesting and you make it exciting. They will engage with it. Yeah? The problem is not that it's hard. Because, again, last week we gave a bunch of year sevens a load of VB code. They worked it out within an hour and they were working on it. So it's not the fact that it's hard. It can't be. Because the kids, as long as you teach it in such a way, they engage with it. We got them with PowerPoint, because they all know PowerPoint, to death. Um, we got them with PowerPoint. We've PowerPointed them to death in year set by year seven. So we gave them a PowerPoint that said, right, mate, quiz, but you ain't allowed to do the stupid thing where it shows the answer on the next slide. We'll give you a load X, we'll give you a load of VB code to put in the back of it, and you've got to work it, make it work. I'll show you the VB code, you take that VB code away and you make it work. Make it work with macros. And again, I, had, I have in my department three of them who worked out, three of my students walked out and said that's the best IT lesson I've ever had. So it means that they do engage with the code. They love the idea of making something work, but they don't understand where to go with it. All you see when you see computing is you see programming. And, it's, 
I'm saying girls, and I'm being very, very sexist, I know, but when I say, but girls, girls when they're in school, they automatically say, yeah, but I don't want to be sat in a box all day. I don't want to be sat in a box coding. And that's what they believe computing is all about. And then I say, yes, but am I, stood in a, am I sat in a box? I'm stood in front of a room, I'm talking to you, I have a computer science degree, okay? Before, when I was out there, I was going to clients. I was talking to clients about web development. And then I would go out and I would show them a design. They would like the design. I would go away and I would code it for them. I would make it for them. And that way, I'm not just sat in a box. Yes, I would go away and make something. But I would have a team of friends and I would, we would work together. Okay? And the first, what I've got, I mean, I protected my tweets and I will unprotect them when I get out of this room, when I get hand, my hands on the computer. But what I've done, I've set up, um, I've got my blog. My blog is, um, I'll put it on, it's Mr. Gristwood at EduBlogs. Or if you go on my tweet thing, it's my website link. And again, I'll unprotect my tweets in just a minute. Um, the idea, what I've done is I've set up a thing where it's getting kids into computing and kids getting kids to understand computing. And that, I think, is the most important thing. And I put out a major plea of because I did my computer science degree, I've still got my mates in industry. And my major plea is this. If you are working in computing, send me an email. If you, are, if you want to get my email address, I'll freely give it out by the end, at the end of this, this thing. Send me an email. And send me an email, and it's just got to be something simple. It's got to be, what job do you do? How did you get into it? Why do you love it? It's simple. Yeah? That could be a very long minute. But that's it. But those three things can change what a kid, how a kid views. My sister has a PhD in, a PhD in, art, in the history of art. But yet now she works in artificial, artificial intelligence looking at computing. And she's writing out now for me a big list of how she got into it. Because she is not a computer person. But she's now become the geek girl that is my sister because she's got into it a different way. She's got into it through a whole weird way of getting into computing. But of course, for her to explain it to somebody, she can say, well, actually, you know what? I wasn't into computing, but why do I love it? Because I get to go, I get to, go to America, I get to talk to the creator of Wally, -E, and I get to go to see Pixar, and I get to see all these people at DreamWorks, and these people are really engaged with it. And because they're engaged with it, I love it, and I'm now developing things from, from my PhD that will help artificial intelligence. Her particular one is um, can a robot paint a picture? Because that, and it's, her thing is, is that I'm, I'm not an expert, but she says anybody can go along and draw a line on a piece of paper. If you draw a line on a piece of paper, you can charge 250 grand for that. Well, a robot could go along and draw a line on a piece of paper, but would you pay 250 grand for it? And that's her thing, that's her hypothesis. But she does a lot of work for this and how robots can paint a paper. And that's kind of it, really. I mean, I'm open for questions and stuff, and that was completely winging it, so I just thought it would be good just to talk about it and try and get, like I say, some people just to write me a brief synopsis. If I could write down the word, but I can't. Um, my um, email address is bgristwood at googlemail.com. I'll write, I'll, if you need my email address, it could really, I, I could write it down somewhere. Um, and um, it just would be brilliant just to have some emails just saying why you love the job that you do. And I think that would change a lot of the perceptions and a lot of the ways that kids view computing and ICT. Because my idea is to make them a display and make a display of what careers we can do with ICT and the reasons why we do it. Because if you go into, like even careers in schools, it pants sometimes when you look at the computing job. You know, you've got geek guys, you've got, you know, you've got things that wouldn't engage girls and wouldn't engage guys, and you've got to get them engaged with that. Sorry, I'm opening up for questions. Sorry.